These days, I'm really popular for telling people to not go to the gym because I can't expect the average person to do that. That's just the reality of it. If I can get the average Joe or Jane to increase their activity without overloading their rate of perceived exertion, then I'm doing my job. I personally think that this daily practice approach is way more valuable to the average person than going to the gym because the barrier of entry is basically non-existent. Your life will change in ways you can't even imagine. In this video, I'm gonna show you the insane benefits of doing push-ups and pull-ups every day and why you should start incorporating some form of it in your daily routine. And make sure to stick around until the end because I'm gonna show you a strategy on how to do just that. This could be a complete game changer for you if you wanna take your fitness and weight loss goals to the next level. These are the exact same tips that I give to all my coaching clients and they've all gone to see some amazing results. So you know it works. And if you want to work with me, then you can book a free consultation by checking out the link somewhere at the top here or in the description below. Before I get started, don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to get notified every time I post a new video every week. It really helps support my channel. All right, let's get into it. Okay, one of the biggest problems for the average person living in North America and really most Western countries where the average person only gets 4,000 steps a day, literally the definition of a sedentary lifestyle is that, a lack of activity. For context, the Hadza in Tanzania who still lived a mostly hunter-gatherer way of life walk anywhere between 4 to 7 miles every day or 6 to 11 kilometers and they don't suffer from modern Western diseases like obesity, diabetes, cancer, or cardiovascular disease. If you don't know how those numbers translate, the Hadza get more activity in a day than the standard American gets in a week. That's according to Herman Ponser who did that study. So a sedentary lifestyle is our baseline, where in the US alone, 75% of people are overweight. Experts are predicting that number to go up to 90% by 2030. So that's the norm for you. That's the average person. If you're living a sedentary lifestyle where you're sitting for at least eight hours a day, don't worry, it's not all doom and gloom. The crazy part is even if you're already working out, you'll still get benefits from what I'm gonna show you today. And back when I was a young buck, I would have never given you this advice. But I'm always learning, I'm a truth seeker. And I think that this is just part of getting older and wiser as I learn more about fitness and nutrition. These days, I'm really popular for telling people to not go to the gym even though I go to the gym every day because I can't expect the average person to do that. That's just the reality of it. You can really only expect the average person to go to the gym twice a week, if that. So now I just remove that part completely and I just make it optional. Instead, I ask my coaching clients to do micro workouts. I also like to call them exercise snacks. My protocol these days for exercise is to get my coaching clients to anchor a micro workout at various times during the day where they don't even have to think about it. They just do it. It's as automatic as brushing their teeth. What I found is it's a much better approach and the benefits are insane. No, you're not gonna set records for the heaviest squat or bench press by using this approach, but who cares? If I can get the average Joe or Jane to increase their activity without overloading their rate of perceived exertion, then I'm doing my job. Because treating body weight movements like push-ups, pull-ups, and squats as just part of your everyday routine has some insane life-changing benefits like improving insulin sensitivity and blood glucose control, building and maintaining muscle, which is how you get that tight and toned look. It burns extra calories at rest as a byproduct because muscle is a very energy expensive tissue to build and maintain. You get stronger bones. It strengthens your heart. It improves immune function. It elevates your mood. It's good for your brain because it spurts the production of BDNF, which is often touted as miracle growth for the brain. It helps activate autophagy, which is a cleanse on a cellular level. It triggers the production of glutathione, which is the body's main antioxidant. It even has anti-aging effects because you're also triggering the production of growth hormone and testosterone. And so much more. That's why I always say that if the benefits of exercise could be put in a pill, it would be the single greatest blockbuster medication of all time. Like if I could do extra workouts and transfer the benefits to my parents, I would. And you get access to all those benefits for free. I think a lot of people know that they get those benefits in some way, shape, or form, or maybe you don't, that's okay. But going to the gym and exercising in general can be such a huge barrier. I get it. So what I'm advocating for these days is to help my coaching clients practice and build better habits and behaviors that they can do for the rest of their life. 
it's infinitely easier to get in the habit of doing push-ups and pull-ups every day for the rest of your life rather than having to make it to the gym five, six, or seven days a week. Again, it's just not gonna happen. That's just the reality of it. I've been doing this for a decade. What's really surprising is how effective this approach is. And this is coming from a guy who used to compete in a sport where the goal is to lift as much weight as possible overhead. I'm telling you to just move your own body weight and the results can be just as amazing when it comes to your health and weight loss goals because you get to incorporate exercise into your daily routine and you get to practice it every day which has so much more value. Remember, nothing shuts down your fat burning metabolism faster than prolonged periods where you're completely sedentary. The answer then is to do micro workouts. A common question I get asked when it comes to exercise is how do I get better at pull-ups or how do I do a pull-up? My personal record is 52 butterfly pull-ups, by the way, for all the doubters out there. And I gotta admit, pull-ups can be very hard for some people. It's definitely a nice feather on your cap if you can do one. It's also a very functional movement. Let me tell you a quick story about this. I can still vividly remember when I went to the gym for the first time and I couldn't do a single pull-up to save my life. Then I looked to my right and I saw this older Asian lady banging out sets of five. In my head, I'm like, man, I've got work to do. So what I tell my coaching clients if they want to learn to do a pull-up is to get one of those pull-up bars that you can hang at your door or find a place in your house where you can hang. Just make sure it's sturdy and practice doing a pull-up every day. Baby steps, just start by doing the negative part of it where you're lowering yourself. So get a chair or something to elevate yourself, get your chin over the bar and slowly lower yourself. Do that every time you walk by that pull up bar if you want. Give it a few weeks or months and see what happens. The strength gains that happens when you practice push-ups and pull-ups every day are insane. People see me do muscle ups these days, which is obviously an advanced pull and push gymnastics technique and they ask me how to do it. I tell them the exact same thing. Just start by doing push-ups daily and negatives on a pull-up bar and again, do it every day. I mean, I've been practicing those movements since I was 18. I didn't wake up one day and decided I was gonna do a muscle up. No, I started from zero just like everyone else. And the concept of doing these body weight exercises every day isn't anything new. Herschel Walker is probably one of the most recognizable names and faces in North America to do this. He was known for doing a thousand push-ups and a thousand sit-ups every day. And up to this day, he's an absolute unit in his mid fifties. But we're not even talking about a thousand push-ups here or even a hundred. You can even just look at people that do manual labor, you know, blue collar workers. For example, look at the forearms of a carpenter. They're massive. Same thing with construction workers, farmers, and mechanics. That's also where the term farmer strength comes from, by the way. And I'm not saying that they're beacons of health. They might even be rocking dad bods. But just look at the body part that they use for work every day, which is their forearms. They're jacked. It's obviously in their job description to do manual labor, but that daily practice of using their body to move an object obviously has tremendous value to their physique. The key is to not go crazy. Like you don't see a carpenter go to failure when they're swinging a hammer, or you don't see a farmer going to failure when they're throwing hay bales. No, they'll get injured. For example, if 20 consecutive push-ups is your max where you literally can't do one, if you try, that's not what you're gonna do for one set. No, just do five to 10 push-ups. Then do that two to three times a day. If you can't do a regular push-up, that's okay. Again, baby steps. Do the push-ups off your counter or on your knees and go from there. It should take you no time to do it if you do the right progression. Then anchor that practice before your meals. So if you eat three times a day, that's 30 push-ups. That's 10 over your max. That's how you slowly build up your skill and strength. More importantly, your rate of perceived exertion is also half your max. You're nowhere near close to failure which means you're more likely to do it instead of just doing one set and going to failure at 20. Do that practice every single day and you're gonna be shocked how many more push-ups you can do. You're gonna destroy your max of 20 push-ups in no time. And then watch what happens to your triceps, shoulders, and pecs after just a few months. It's gonna blow your mind. And your baseline level of fitness, in which you can launch all future fitness and life endeavors, is also gonna be way higher, which means you're gonna be a more functional and badass human being. And think about it this way. Let's do some simple math because numbers don't lie. If you do 30 push-ups every day, that's around 900 push-ups in a month, resulting in a mind-blowing 10,950 push-ups in a year. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to deduce that if you do a movement for almost 11,000 reps, something good is probably going to happen. It's going to change your life. And you're not even breaking a sweat because you're doing it faster than most commercials out there. 
if you add in some pull-ups, again, even if you're just doing the negatives to start, as well as some body weight squats, now we're talking about a full body workout that will take your health and fitness to the next level. It's gonna change your life. Again, still without breaking a sweat. You can do your push-ups and squats in your office clothes. I can't stress enough the importance of associating positive feelings towards exercise. It's really the key to this strategy. It has the same importance to your success as having a good relationship with food. I personally think that this daily practice approach is way more valuable to the average person than going to the gym. Again, this is coming from a former competitive exerciser because the barrier of entry is basically non-existent. Again, you can do push-ups and squats anytime and anywhere. Doing it this way has also been proven to be way more effective because we're taking advantage of something called habit stacking. If you anchor a habit that you want to establish to a pre-existing habit, like brushing your teeth or eating, you're way more likely to succeed. Again, it does not have to be an hour long. It can just be two to five minutes a few times a day. If you're completely brand new, just start with one set or even one rep. I don't care. We all have to start somewhere. One rep is better than none. That's it. That's the secret to this. And if you can't spare two minutes, you've got bigger problems. I can't help you. But the cumulative volume of these micro workouts will translate to a full workout if you do it every day. So if you can turn micro workouts into a habit like brushing your teeth, your life will change in ways you can't even imagine. And the carryover benefits when it comes to improving your health and therefore you're improving your quality of life and affecting your longevity is unquantifiable. I've done many consultations over the last couple of years specifically. And again, if you want to work with me, you can book a free consultation by clicking on the link below. But one of the most common things I hear from people is they've fallen off their exercise routine over the last couple of years because their gyms were shut down. And they're always blown away when I introduce them to this concept of micro workouts and treating exercise like a daily practice. Personally, I do two sessions of these five minute micro workouts and I'm constantly blown away with what it does to me. Even though I've been training for almost two decades now, I still get tremendous value from it. For starters, I'm increasing my activity. It's 10 minutes more activity than what I was doing before. I avoid prolonged periods of stillness. The invaluable muscle building and maintaining signal I'm constantly sending to my body can't be overstated. Again, think about carpenters and mechanics practicing their manual labor skill every day and they have gigantic forearms. My baseline level of fitness is also higher now, which makes me better at Muay Thai, which is what I do for play. And this is so important to mention, the energy boost and mood elevation you get by doing this is insane. I feel 10 times better afterwards whenever I move my body. The boost in mood and energy is easily the most underrated benefit of all of this. And I've heard multiple experts and scientists say that you actually want to exercise for the brain. Exercise keeps your brain healthy and happy. I personally know a few people that struggle with mental health problems. Maybe you're struggling with it right now. But I'm constantly blown away that they just get prescribed pills as an intervention. That's it. There's no mention about making dietary changes, which has a lot to do with neurochemistry, or the cognitive benefits of movement, exercise, getting vitamin D from the sun, and the healing effects of spending time in nature. It's really frustrating. Like, movement is medicine. And a lot of people don't think about exercise in that sense when people do these crazy intense group fitness classes. And by the way, I'm not saying that you should never elevate your heart rate. There's a time and place for it. It just can't be the norm. It's too stressful to your body. And you also shouldn't feel really sore after a workout. That means you overdid it. But pay attention to how you feel after just moving your body for two minutes. Especially if you're feeling sluggish, you get an instant boost in energy. One of the things I had to do when I lived in Mexico for a year was shift my workouts in the morning because you can't work out there at noon. It's way too hot, especially because my gym was on the beach. And I've always trained at noon or mid-afternoon for as long as I can remember. So I had to work out at 8 in the morning. But after that morning workout, I felt like a million bucks, which then carried over to everything I did afterwards. I was way more productive because I had all this energy and I felt amazing. Again, those are the things that's hard to measure, but the benefits are undeniable. You'll never hear someone say that they felt worse after moving their body. And think about it this way for practicality. This is really my biggest selling point, if you're not sold yet. It's infinitely easier to fit in two to five minutes of exercise into your daily routine, rather than trying to find an hour to go to the gym to go to your spin class. Add in the time to go to the gym, get changed, drive back home, and you're looking more like one and a half hours. So instead of trying to pull off a Houdini trick, trying to find the time to go to the gym, just do a two to five minute micro workout wherever you are. 
it's infinitely easier to integrate into your routine and it's just as effective. In fact, I'd argue that it's even more effective because you're actually gonna do it. This is the secret sauce to exercise to get amazing results without having to go to the gym. Just do push-ups, pull-ups, and bodyweight squats every day. You're welcome. Now, if you're someone who's been struggling losing weight for years, you know, you've tried every diet under the sun, you've cut the fat, you've gone on a calorie deficit diet, you work out every day, but you just can't seem to lose the weight, or maybe you're feeling stuck because you've hit a weight loss plateau and you can't seem to get out of it, you can't find answers, and you realize that it's time to get one-on-one -on -one professional help, then feel free to reach out to me. Just head on over to my website, newbiefitnessacademy.com forward slash coaching, read through the page and the success stories, and fill out the application form for a free consultation. If I think that we're a good fit, then I'll personally reach out to you directly. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post a new video every week. And feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions about this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Virtual high five.